All right, ladies and gentlemen, Ann Sieg coming at you, creator and founder of the e-commerce business school. We're going live. And I have someone really, really awesome here with me today. Someone I've known for 14 plus years. Yes. Hey there. Greetings to you, Coach Kurt. Hey, Ann. Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Hey, I'm so glad you could um, clear out your time to be here, Kurt. I know it's a Busy, busy day here at 8020 Marketing. That's the parent company of EBS. Uh, anyways, all to say we're here together and we're going to share some exciting um, backstory, a uh, exciting backstory relative to. So, Kurt, we have um, done so many things together. Let's just say promoted. We're going to use that word um, because that's when I first joined you in 2004. And then Brian Cummings shows up with this, this book, Flipping product right mm -hmm. and you were at that event where brian delivered the first ever book flipping profit system workshop something went through your head then because since that time you and Kay, your lovely wife moved forward and you've done really really well with books so what got you thinking why books well and like a lot of things that we do and have promoted through the years i field tested you know, I take it out and I just take it around the block and kick the tires and, you know, because we want to deliver good quality stuff to the to our people. You know, I mean, that's important to us. And so I usually get on board and, you know, make a little bit of money and say, yeah, this works. It's you know, it's good. So as I was field testing after the workshop, as I was field testing um, a little bit of the book, uh, flipping profit system I actually was doing it before the workshop um as right. brian was mentoring your son i believe yes. or, yeah yeah husband and, so, and son husband mm -hmm. and son i was riding along testing and so on and so forth so i already had you know a good feel for going into a workshop and just my wife was seeing what i was doing she was coming along and so okay and we, I've done so many gigs through the years, some great, some not great, and everything in between. And so uh, this was probably the first thing she ever was interested in doing with me. She said, what are you doing? So we started doing it together, which was kind of a nice surprise because it really is a family business. Uh, it, uh, and so on and so forth. So to make a long story short, Normally, when I'd say, okay, I'm done, and what's the next thing, or get back more concentration on my responsibilities, 80-20, because we were doing it very part-time, um, and we kept doing it, and part of the reason it was just a lot of fun, and we're making money, so why not, uh, you know, bench that gradually, gradually back off, we became much more her business than my business, so that's a little bit of snapshot of the journey that we took, and why we did it together for two, three years, uh, and made a lot of money, had a lot of fun. Well, made a lot of money, had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a really good recipe for success. Yeah. Made a lot of money, had a lot of fun. Now, some people- It's a real good, it's a real good message for marriage too, by the way. Well, I was gonna say, it, I tell people this can be and has been a marriage enrichment course. I, I mean that really, truly and sincerely. It really has. Because yep. so often in marriage, uh, the spouses are not together working on main activities like earning a livelihood. Mm -hmm. And here in this case, it is UNK. And so like and other folks that I've interviewed, it becomes like date weekend. Mm -hmm. And now you get to chat in the car while you're doing your road trip to the, the latest Friends of the Library sale, which I know is yours in case specialty, which we will be talking about this coming Friday. By the way, everyone, go ahead and register. The link is right here on this post. Uh, we have a class, uh, informational web class, this Friday at the time of this video. Now, we may use the same video in the future for subsequent um, web class uh, classes, sessions that we have about the book flipping profit system. Well, Kurt, um, you know, you and Kay have done this very part time. I mean, I know the hours you put in here. <laughs> so, so I know for a fact it has to be part time with the books. And yet, if I may, are you OK with me sharing? Um, we have shown um, the numbers and, and what it's done for your family. Are you cool? Are you okay with me sharing? Yeah, sure. We share in our webinars. Let's okay. give people a little bit of a sneak peek here um, before okay. they come on Friday. Yeah, absolutely. So let me grab and do a share. Okay. You let me know, Kurt. Do you see my yep. screen? Okay. So yep. there, there it's you at a Friends of the Library sale, right? Yep. Yep. 
Yep. And I was actually doing a promo video for Brian, for us. So other people would know that's a friends of the library sale and to the right, it's kind of a dark picture there. It's a little bit of our hall, um, you know, coming back. So yeah, that's what it was. And as we continued into the book thing, Kay just loves children's books. And so that became her specialty. So when we would go to Friends of the Library Sale and go to Friends of the Library Sale, um, we she had to the children's books and uh, you know found her little rhythm there, what type of book to look for and all of that kind of stuff. And you know, uh, she, and by the way, she is not tech savvy at all. I mean, she didn't even want to use and never does a scanner. She uses her phone and, you know, it takes about four times as long for her to scan books as a scanner. Now, Brian teaches you should get a scanner because you can go faster. Not my wife. Uh -uh. And so, you know, you don't have to be real tech savvy. The data is dished up and she just loves looking through children's books. And that actually to the right there, that picture that almost goes to the ceiling. That is a stack of children's books that she vetted and bought. And, and one sale. No, we let people know that this is this chorus has been created from Brian Cummings, seven plus years of in the field scanning books. So it wasn't like, um, you know, it's just some fluffy idea he had. And I think I can learn this like yesterday and rip this out. This is seven plus years from Brian, and this is proprietary. So much so that, Kurt, as you shared with me, you've been known to go to Friends of the Library. They're huge. And even on the last day, mm -hmm. and all you see all the other fellow scanners, and it's like, no problemo. What happens on that? Because I, I, this might have been the one where it was the final day. And yet you come back with a big lucrative haul. I think this was about 1100 bucks in profit, if I remember right. But is it true that this is different than the other scanners and you can go in and clean house? What's that like? Yeah, it's a loophole that Brian discovered, and it really truly is a loophole. Now, granted, the buyers that are really aggressive know what they're doing. They're going to skim some of the cream off the top. There's no denying that. But they leave a lot on the shelves, the second layer of cream, if you will, that they, you know, I'll have some, I'll just go right behind somebody and, uh, you know, oh, yeah. 20 bucks, I'll take that. And, you know, and so it's just nice. Most of the scanners out there, from my experience, aren't even doing FBA, which is another huge advantage, right. let alone Brian's uh, loophole. And so it's really, um, you know, the competition isn't really, really strong for what we do and how yeah. we do it. So. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that because for anyone who's been doing business for some time, especially if they do anything online, an astute marketer would say, oh, but hang on, is the marketplace already saturated? Like if I come and the fields are already gone and there's no hope for me, like, is this game over? And that's that's not the case with books. Um, and by the way, Brian, in his training this coming Friday, make sure you register, the link is right here, is gonna talk about the four keys. You've mentioned two of them, that being we use FBA, which is both Amazon by Amazon and I uh, just drew a blank on the other one, uh, the loophole, the data loophole. And he goes into a deep explanation because uh, I've had people, ah, oh, there is no loophole and that's probably illegal. No, it has simply to do with bandwidth, the amount of bandwidth that can come through a device. There's limitations. Brian will explain all that. It's known as buckets, buckets of data. So, hey, it's okay. And he'll talk that through. But that is what happens is he kind of, open the trap door so we can gain access to other data that just the rest of the book scanners haven't figured out. And it's like, well, thank you, Brian, for passing that advantage along. So you and Kay, this is a screenshot from, looks like it was a couple of years worth. So you were doing it, not even two full years. Yep. So this is your sales and you take, uh, you can take your number. Will you explain it? This is, these are your numbers. <laughs> yeah. You know, sales and profits are obviously different, but the return on investment, what's so really fun about the book business versus a lot of the other stuff 
out there is the ROI return on investment is really, really high. And it really is all about data, And We found a data leap, d- loophole. It's about analyzing the data. It's about analyzing the data as you're on your phone. Just say, boom, boom, boom. It's a touch more sophisticated than shop your way to wealth, but not much. I mean, it's certainly not rocket science at all. And so over this period of time, we sold 7,645 books. And quite, I'm just going to be honest, the children's book category, which my wife loved, is a little bit less uh, ROI lucrative than some of the other categories. But that's fine. There's still plenty of money you made. So even if that was five bucks a book profit, I think it was more than that. You know, you're looking at, you know, roughly seven and a half times five, you know, you know, 35,000, a part time job of say 20K a year while you're out on a date with your husband having fun. I mean, beats beats part time at the, you know, pushing carts or something. So, yeah, absolutely. And I know your goal was to pay for your daughter's weddings. They're all, Absolutely stunningly beautiful daughters that you have there, Kurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, weddings are expensive and the books help to fund your daughter's wedding. So uh, that was really nice that you happen to like to kick the tires, as you say. You're good at that, by the way. You're really good at that. That's You're kicking the tires is what got me in the e-commerce space, by the way, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the books, so this was a nice uh, win, win, win. Because you and Kay, Kay especially, love doing the book business with you and the win for the daughters and the families, everyone involved to be able to help fund your, the daughters' uh, weddings. What, what's also kind of fun or funny is uh, the middle daughter there uh, lives in Florida now. My son-in-law just retired from the Marines. Um, and so we were down there for their wedding, though, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. And we drove back up you know, from Florida to Rockford. And on the way, we stopped at a book sale. And um, this, it was snowing in, if you're from the Carolinas, it's rare. It was snowing in North Carolina. I mean, like two or three inches of snow. You know, I'm just driving on it like nothing because Chicago, that that is nothing, you know. But down there, was like everybody freaked. They don't have snow plows, salt or anything like that. The whole city was shut down. I said, so I, I pull up to the book sale literally the only ones there, but it was open. The owner was there and he said, come on in. And I got to know him. That one connection, it was on the way back from uh, one of my daughter's weddings, uh, made me a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. He, Cause as I got to know him through the day, he said, why don't you come back here? And I got some stuff for you. So I started going back. He'd save, he'd save textbooks for me. So I, I go back there once or twice a year and scan the textbook. So anyway, that's how I guess I tell that story, how the lifestyle and business kind of seamlessly weave together. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember you had a photo of you sitting in, I forget what they're called. It begins with a G, those big containers. Gay, Gaylords. A Gaylord. Yeah, you're yep. sitting there like that's your head peeking up from there. <laughs> you were busy scanning away. Yeah. Well, my wife, my wife is Gaylord diving over in the children's department. She wouldn't let me take her picture, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. That's great. All righty. Well, we're going to be together in the call with Brian. Um, and so we've got some special things, especially because you become an expert in a subcategory. And those same teachings can pass into other book categories, subcategories. So it is, this is what I hear from my book people. It's different because it's more emotional because of the love of books. Having just interviewed Christina yesterday, she just loved books. So it's really enjoyable handling books. And that books is considered the most profitable category in Amazon. Oh, so, I, didn't, I yeah. didn't explain the ROI enough, Anne. The ROI mm-hmm. is you can get books really cheap. For instance, the one uh, book sale that I told you about down in Carolina, um, 35 cents for a children's book. You know, And to sell those books for you know, 12, 15, 18, 20 dollars, you know, you're not going to find the really big profit, you know, every once in a while you do, we sold a children's book for $225 once that we paid a quarter for, I mean, it does happen, but those things are rare, they're a lot of fun when they happen, but that's why the ROI is so high with books is because you can source, you know, uh, we went to a library sale, friend of a library sale, uh, over in one of the Chicago burbs, for in the children's 
department four books for a quarter. So what is that? 6.25 cents. We never figured out the ROI on that one. It would be so ridiculous, even more ridiculous than what you're seeing here. So again, it's, it's that part of it's a lot of fun. You don't have to have a lot of cash to, uh, for, to get some money back. Speaking of ROI, just yesterday, we were calculating the ROI on one of my book sales, which was over $500. And at most we paid three bucks for that book. Our son did the sourcing and um, it was 16,000% ROI because $3 into a 500 plus dollar sale. So we're not saying that this happens all the time but it happens often enough and this is what makes it a really lucrative category within Amazon. All right, well, thanks so much guys. It was fun being with y'all. Again, make sure you register. The link is in this post. And we look forward to seeing you in our upcoming informational web class. All right, till then, bye-bye, Kurt. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.